Hey everybody, it's Zach from My Shire Farm and I've got some great news for you. If you are trying to do quail for profit and you're trying to start a business and trying to make money off of your Coturnix quail and you're coming to QuailCon, you need to watch this video. We've got something very, very special for you. I can't wait till you find out about it. So here we go. Hey, my name is Linda Easton. I am a quail raiser in Sacramento, California. And today I'm here to share with you a little bit about my experiences in my first year as a quail entrepreneur. Hopefully something that I share with you today will inspire you to start or grow a quail business that is fun, rewarding, and profitable. But before we get started, I wanna let you know that if you're attending QuailCon this year and you have a quail business, we have an exciting opportunity for eight of you. So stay tuned till the end. So what I'm gonna do in this video is tell you a little bit about my background and the skill set that I brought to my business, but also the mindset that I brought to my business. I had three quail enterprises this year, so I'm gonna tell you about my experiences with each one of those and what I learned. Okay, first a little bit about my skill set. Uh, I, for a long time, taught elementary school, both special education and regular education. And then uh, with my youngest son, we used sign language to help him communicate before he learned how to talk. And then that led me into a different career path that um, involved marketing. I worked for companies that taught sign language to children and developed graphics and uh, websites and marketing materials, curriculum and newsletters for them. 2016, I was involved in a business called Rented Chicken Sacramento, and we rented out a coop and three chickens to families who weren't sure that they wanted to have backyard chickens uh, for a three month period. At the end of the three months, families could decide whether to buy their coop, keep their chickens, or to send it back to the farm to be rented out to another family. In 2019, my husband and I bought a farm, a two and a half acre farm. And in 2020, I attended the California Farm Academy to help me learn about the business of farming. So now I wanna talk about the mindset that I brought to the business. Because in the past, I'd worked for these really wonderful, powerful, smart women in a supportive role and helping them realize their dreams. And then all of a sudden I realized that I needed to be that smart and powerful woman. And I had a lot of fears and doubts around my abilities. About that time I ran across a TED talk by Simon Sinek called Start With Why. And in it, he really helps you find out the reason why you're here on this earth. And so I went through that process. And do you wanna know what my purpose is on this planet? It took me over 50 years to find out, but this is it. I create joyful experiences for myself and others. And I looked at that and realized I can't create joyful experiences from a place of fear. So I need to do something to help create the right mindset for building this business. And about the same time, I came across some videos that talked about the idea of the law of attraction. And simply put, the law of attraction is this, that the universe gives you whatever it is you want and whatever it is you focus on, you'll get more of, good or bad. So I decided to experiment in creating a positive mindset to help me in my first year of business. And to do this, I came up with three things that I say to myself every day, kind of like a mantra. And here it is. I have everything I need. Everything I want comes easily to me and everything is always working out for me. So I say those three things to myself every day. Zach from My Shire Farm, who's my guru in all things quail for profit, said that you, when you start a quail business, you should not put all your eggs in one basket. And I think that's really wise. So when I started out, I decided to do three enterprises eating eggs, hatching eggs, and classes. Before I started my first year in business, I did a little bit of market research. I was working for my friend John at the refarmery, um, running his farmer's market booth on Saturdays, and I asked him if I could take my celadon eggs and put them down at the end of the, end of the table and see if they sold, because I wasn't sure if people would think maybe they're too weird or um, overpriced or you know whatever. I wasn't sure if they were gonna sell. So I put out cartons of 15 for $5 and I brought whatever I had that week to the market. 
and it was anywhere from three or four to um, 10, 11, 12 uh, cartons. And every week, no matter what, they would sell out within the first two hours. So I knew that there was a demand. From this point, I took this information and decided to approach the uh, Sacramento Natural Foods Co-op, the biggest and oldest uh, natural food store in our area, and, and uh, pitch these beautiful celadon eggs to them. So I, I got my samples together, a letter of introduction in case I didn't talk to anybody in person, and I went to the customer service desk, and there was a volunteer who was working there, and I wasn't getting anywhere in my conversation with her. I, I asked to talk to the dairy manager because I knew that was, that was uh, who I needed to get to. And she wasn't going to tell me anything about the dairy manager or how I could contact them. And I was just about to give up and I thought, you know what, I'm just going to show her what I have to offer. So I took out the Celadon eggs and she, her reaction was so positive and it totally turned the conversation and she didn't call the dairy manager, but what she did do was call the merchandising manager, which was who I really needed to talk to. And the merchandising manager came down, she took a look at the product, she told me exactly how much they were gonna sell them for, what packaging that I needed to do. We, we talked about it and brainstormed a little bit right there. And she told me I need to create a belly band, print it on waterproof paper so that it would stand up to the high humidity in the egg case. And, um, and we worked it all out right then and there. So I got that account and because it's a respected organization, it made, me e it, made it easier for me to go into other accounts. Um, I, I did try two other um, small grocery stores, specialty grocery stores, and uh, and it didn't work. Uh, they they put the, the Celadon eggs out there and they did, didn't sell. But for whatever reason, uh, the Sacramento Food Co-op uh, ended up being a very good customer. And so from there, I was able to build not to other grocery stores, but to restaurants. One night, my husband and I went to crew sushi um restaurant and because we just love it there and we thought it would be a good match for the eggs so we took a bag of samples with an introduction le letter and we knew they were busy so there was no chance of us going back to talk to the chef at that point but i gave it to the waiter and it was a long time before i heard back but i got a, uh, an email from from the head chef and he asked me out how much the eggs were and i told him and then i didn't hear back again for a long time, it was three weeks, I think I'd just finally given up thinking that, you know, the price that I gave him was um, too high. Um, and then he wrote back and said, let's do it. And and um, they've been a really reliable customer. The other restaurant that was able to get was a uh, Lord of the Rings themed cafe uh, that, that recently opened up in Sacramento and downtown and uh, they wanted speckled eggs and I didn't have any speckled egg layers. So I went and got some and um, which ended up being a good thing. So those three customers, the food co-op and crew and there and back are my three main customers. And I could have expanded, but I really wanted to get an idea of, of <clears throat> how reliable their orders would be and what it was like to service those customers over time. And what I learned that was that they were a really good match for me because every egg that was laid had a place. The best celadons would go off for hatching eggs first, and then the blue eggs would go to the co-op. The speckled eggs, the very pretty, perfect speckled eggs would go to there and back because they get laid out on the charcuterie board. The rest went to crew sushi because um, they didn't care what the outside of the egg looked like. They didn't care if it was really small or really big. It didn't matter. Everything else went to them. And then if it was cracked or really, really ugly, it went to the cat. So every egg that was laid got used. The next enterprise I want to talk about is the hatching eggs. And while I do sell hatching eggs um, through Craigslist sometimes, random people who come to the farm and buy hatching eggs and I never see them again, those aren't my primary customer. I love working with people who have never hatched before. I love giving them the tools and the resources that they need to have a successful experience. So 
I could do a whole video about this and about how profitable it is, um, but I'm just going to give you the general overview of the program. If people come to me, they get a rental kit that includes an incubator with either 12 quail eggs or seven chicken eggs. They get a brooder box, a warming plate, feeder water, um, bedding, and feed. Uh, it's a four-week program, 18 or 21 days of that is uh, incubation, and the rest is chick care. At the end of the rental period, they bring their kit back to me, and they can either keep their chicks or return them to me. If they keep their chicks and they end up with a rooster, the roosters can come back to me. So it makes it risk-free for those people who are getting straight run chicks. This program is so much fun, and I have to tell you that I haven't had to advertise it very much because uh, I got a call from like the Fox Morning News show and they early on and they came out and did a piece about it um, and then since then we've had the CBS Morning Show out twice um, we've had Edible Sacramento Magazine, Inside Sacramento Magazine twice and none of those I ever asked for. Those were people who found out about the program, came to me and asked if they could feature it. So we offer both chicken eggs and quail eggs and about 40% of our customers want quail eggs. And what happens is they just think, well, let's, let's hatch out quail eggs, um, but we don't really know anything about quail, so we'll just bring them back to the farm. And after they hatch, they fall in love with the babies. They want to keep them and they want to learn about how to take care of the quail. And so that leads into my next enterprise, classes. At first, even though I'm an experienced teacher and I'm really comfortable talking in front of groups, I was really nervous about teaching a quail class because I didn't feel like I knew enough to really uh, be an authority. So... The way that I got myself into it was by offering a free class at a local feed store. And then we finished up the aviary at the farm and decided it would make more sense to have the quail classes at the farm um, so that they could take a tour of the aviary and see the feeders and the waterers and things like that. So in review, during my first year of, of being a quail entrepreneur, um, we had about 130 birds at any given time. We raised them uh, primarily in the production aviary. We sold every egg that was laid, and on the rare weeks when we had some extras, those were given away as samples, so they were put to good use. We've had about 100 families and teachers go through the Hatching at Home program, and I've done six classes to date. Uh, first, I learned that um, my fellow quail keepers are awesome. When my girls went into molt and I didn't have enough eggs to fulfill my grocery store and, and restaurant orders, I contacted uh, Vicki Kenton and Ruth Bennett and uh, because I know that they use the same feed as I do and um, bought eggs from them so I could fill in the gap and keep those orders going until my um, girls got back online. That was fabulous to be able to count on them. The next thing I learned was that restaurants, I was told that restaurant orders would be really sporadic and I found that to be not true. The restaurants were more reliable than the grocery store. And in fact, the eggs that I sell into the restaurant because they don't need packaging, uh, the, the outer belly band, um, are much more profitable. So uh, next year when I scale up, definitely going to go more toward the restaurant route. Uh, staying small gave me the opportunity to develop my systems. So there's a lot of new systems. I had to set up a website, set up e-commerce, set up invoicing, set up um, customer communication, especially with the hatching program where they get the reminder emails at um, the day of, of candling and the day of lockdown and the day of hatch. So it took some time to get all those systems in place, but now that they are set up, it'll make it a lot easier for me to scale up in the future. The goal for this year was to break even and we achieved that. That meant that the business paid for um, our insurance, it paid for uh, the goat feed, the quail feed, the chicken feed, the supplements, the website, the licenses, and QuailCon. So this first year has been really successful and I share that success 
with all of you because you've been part of that journey. Um, Zach at My Shard Farm and creating the Quail for Profit playlist on YouTube, that has been essential for me. The Quail for Profit Facebook group, you guys have been awesome in answering my questions and inspiring me. So now I'd like to take the opportunity to give back to you to help you create and grow a quail business that you love. So if you are a quail entrepreneur, and you're going to QuailCon and you want help with your marketing materials, I am giving away two hour marketing consultations to eight people. So before QuailCon, we'll meet uh, by phone. I'll find out what you need. I'll develop some materials for you. And then at QuailCon on Saturday, you'll have a half hour slot to meet with me and we'll go over all those things together. So, if you'd like to contact me, email me at the address on the screen and tell me three things. Tell me about your business, what your immediate goals are, and what you need help with the most in terms of marketing. I've enjoyed my time here with you today. I hope that something that I've shared will help you create or grow a quail business for yourself that is fun, rewarding, and profitable.